Welcome back to Cheddar's opening bell. A Russian cyber attack may be on its way to the U.S. The FBI and even President Biden warning this, saying Russia is exploring a potential cyber attack on a slew of U.S. companies. This threat comes amid a recent rise in hacks on U.S. companies, including Microsoft, Okta, and even Nestle. For more on the implications of this, we've got Chris Pearson, founder, CEO of Black Cloak, joining us now. Chris, glad to have you on this morning. The FBI issuing an official warning telling the U.S. to prepare for potential destructive cyber attacks. How concerning is this explicit warning? Um, it's very it's very concerning indeed, especially for those sectors that are more likely to be hit, meaning your financial sector, energy sector, and other sectors that could influence and affect kind of the defense industrial base, those groups of companies that are related to the defense of our country and or right related to others as well. So I was just going to ask you, actually, which sectors are going to be the most likely to be hit, financial sectors being one of those. Um, that sounds uh, pretty concerning to me. I'm curious if Russia does launch a cyber attack, in terms of how widespread that could be, what are we talking here and what measures do we have in place right now to counterstrike Russian cyber aggression? So there are a few different things here. I mean, when you really look at it, we think that there could be a few different types of attacks. First of all, ransomware attacks. We've seen that used in the past by cyber criminal elements out of Russia, by privateers and other cyber criminals there. But those could also be used and leveraged just like we saw last summer with the colonial pipeline attack. So essentially denying access to internal systems so that companies cannot operate. Of course, if you put that in the energy sector, oil, national, uh, natural gas sector, as well as uh, just general energy sectors, well, that can cause really impacts for everyone. In terms of the financial sector, we could see some of that as well, but they have many more stringent controls because of how, how highly regulated they are. And so we're more likely to see denial of service attacks. These are attacks where those institutions are bombarded with traffic, internet traffic, that essentially makes their services unavailable to consumers like you and me. Once again, those can be very shattering in terms of the economy, lost money, customer inconvenience, um, and even potentially other areas where you actually have destruction of data. You know, what I find more concerning, you know, beyond just the threat of Russia and a cyber attack is that Russia is not the only threat, right? I mean, we were just talking about this a little while ago. Hacker gang laps us launching an attack uh, on Microsoft, authenticated firm Okta, Samsung, and even NVIDIA. What does this kind of wider spread hacking that we're seeing tell us about the fragility of cybersecurity here in the U.S.? Yeah, so these groups are called hacktivist groups, right? They are groups that are loosely connected together, a very loose operating uh, uh, architecture and infrastructure. And essentially, they commit bad acts, cybercrime acts, for many different purposes, usually for a sociological or political or other some type of purpose. Those we're seeing getting involved much more into the fray right now where they're having real meaningful impact against U.S. companies. Often, these attacks happen all the time. But we're seeing that ramp up now, whereas people are taking and these groups are taking a, a concern with, you know, U.S. companies that are maybe not being as vocal about standing for Ukraine or just a good time and opportunity to go ahead and test those companies and commit their crimes. But we are seeing hacktivists get more involved against those large companies. And this is a real concern. It's a real concern because, number one, it can have real meaningful damage for the companies and for end consumers, but also because those attacks could mask a nation state attack, a more sophisticated attack being targeted towards the company. And while people are looking at fire number one, fire number two could be happening and people might not be able to rush in time to actually prevent that. So I think the important question following that is, is, is what can companies use to combat this? I mean, is there a way to play offense when it seems like certainly from the outside that these companies have really just been playing defense this whole time? Well, on the company side, there's not a lot in terms of offense, right? Companies can't go ahead and hack other countries, other groups, and it becomes increasingly more worrisome when they're loosely connected, loosely affiliated groups like hacktivists. However, our country does have the resources, both the Department of Defense, the NSA, does have the ability to go ahead and, and compromise and hack back, so to speak, and take down other adversaries that are committing crimes against us. But we, companies, do have a lot of defensive measures that we can put in place. 
You just put some of them up on your screen, making sure everyone at the company and even individuals, right, have dual factor authentication turned on for your accounts. It's where a text message comes back to you, verifying that it's you or some other type of hard token uh, rotating authenticator. Making sure that companies invest in cybersecurity insurance so that there is money and funding to go ahead and recover after an attack. And of course, making sure that all company assets and all your personal assets are protected with endpoint malware, antivirus detection and prevention software. Those are all things that everyone can do together. So companies are going to be more of a defensive role, but the United States, which is one of the greatest offensive adversaries out there, we do have offensive capabilities, but they'll be borne by the national intelligence sector. Really quickly, before I have to let you go here, we've only got about 30 seconds, but you mentioned kind of the rise of the hacktivists and, you know, how some of these hacktivist organizations are targeting, you know, companies specifically that they feel have not done enough to kind of, you know, pull themselves out of Russia or kind of, you know, curb um, the finances going to Russia. Uh, We saw that obviously with kind of Nestle and even Anonymous. Do you think we are going to continue to see kind of this, this continued movement and growth around these hacktivists targeting countries, especially around the situation that's happening in Ukraine and Russia and whether a company in their eyes is doing enough? We will. Um, these hacktivists and the collective groups of individuals that are associated with them will only rise in terms of the level of efforts that they are pursuing to go ahead and target either companies and or countries that they don't feel are doing enough when those sociological, political issues become, uh, you know, see the light of day, so to speak. So uh, we're going to see more. It's going to increase. It will impact us here. It could impact our economy and it could have real meaningful damage for individuals like you and I. Yeah, it's kind of a just wait and see until the next kind of hack happens. It's literally been the game over the last uh, two years or so. And it seems like we're getting kind of more and more in that territory. Chris, really appreciate your insight. Chris Pearson, founder and CEO of Black Cloak.